Hi there, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here with another question that was submitted to me by a subscriber to my free weekly Better Developers newsletter. And the question is this, does Python support the ternary operator or something like it? Um, so let me set up the scenario and then I'll show you a few different ways in which we might or might not want to use this sort of kind of version of the ternary operator. So first of all, let me just define what does the ternary operator mean? It's this thing that looks like this. It's like question mark and then colon. And so you can say A, B, and C. And it basically means if A, this is the you know, same as if A, then B, you know, else C. And it's actually like, you know, return B and return C. That's not obviously exactly how you'd write in Python, but that's the basic idea here. So the answer, of course, is, as always with me, yes and no. And let's look at an example of where we might want to see this, um, and then we'll see how we can apply it in different ways. So let's assume that I have a bunch of integers. So I'm going to say here numbers equals 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 21. Oh, so exciting. So what I want to do is I want to get a new list based on this one, and this has two, four, six, eight, eight elements. So I want a new list of eight elements in which each of the new list elements is either the string odd or the string even, describing the number that is in numbers. So what I can do is I can say here, of course, output equals, and you know, empty list, for one number in numbers. I can say here, if one number modulo two, and this means then that basically we get one back, so it's odd. Then we'll say here, you know, output append odd. And I can say else output append even. And if I do this, then we check output. Sure enough, it's got even odd, even odd, and that looks exactly right to me. But if you've taken any of my courses or have known me for any amount of time, you know that I'm going to say that this is really not the best way to do this sort of thing. Rather, what we should do is have a list comprehension. It's a much tighter, nicer, more Pythonic way of doing it. So how would I do that? How can I get a new list back? Well, I'm going to say here for one number in numbers. And then on the top row, well, that's where I'm going to have my expression. So I can just say if one, one number modulo two, well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, what am I doing here? And here's the problem. The problem is that the if statement in Python is just that, a statement. It is not an expression. It doesn't give us a value back. You can't say x equals if this, else that. You just can't do that. And so actually you cannot put an if statement in here. Well, what we could do is of course, use our own function. I could say here, def even or odd of one number. And then I can say here, if one number modulo two, return odd, right? Else return even. And then I can say even or odd one number in numbers. And sure enough, that gives me the same answer as I got before. So this is a solution to the problem, but it feels wrong. and especially people coming from C um, and C type languages where they use this ternary operator, what they'd really like to see is something like this, or one number in numbers. And they like to say, uh, let's see, one number modulo two, question mark. And if it's true, then they want to say odd. And if it's false, they want to say even. And this, of course, does not exist in Python. This operator does not exist. But there is an if else expression. Right now, what we have here is the if-else statement or combination of statements. What we really want is an if-else expression, and we actually have that in Python. So here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say here, odd, if one number modulo two, else even. And look at that, I get exactly the same response back. Now you'll notice that it's a different syntax from the ternary operator. There's no question mark, there's no colon, and to me at least, it reads very strangely. Right now, I know it sounds weird that someone who really loves list comprehensions like me is gonna say that this is very strange syntax, but the fact that you have the result and then the condition and then the else, I'm sorry, like that's just really hard for me to follow. And so as a general rule, I don't actually tell my students about this, this kind of expression in Python because I just find it to be so incredibly confusing and hard to read. And I also think it's pretty rare in Python code. And the only reason it exists is so that when you have, when you need to have an expression, you could have this sort of condition. If this, then A. If not, then B. 
and otherwise you would need to break it out into a separate function. Now, you can also play this in a different place, or you, know, you can use this in a different place, and this is where the subject first came up. Let's say I want to uh, sort a bunch of uh, uh, values in a list. So let's say I have here my list equals 10, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, and then we'll say 5, and then we'll say 7, 8, 9, and then we'll say here 25, 30. Okay, so if I try to now do sorted of my list, this is going to fail. Now I should add that traditionally in Python, lists contain all elements of the same type. So you really should not be encountering this in theory. In reality, it might happen, but that's not my point here. So if I try sorting this, my list, it's gonna say, wait a second, in trying to sort, I'm gonna to try to use the less than operator. I can't use the less than operator if I've got different types here. I've got integers and I've got strings. I've got strings that maybe I could turn into integers. So what I could do is I could say sorted of my list, and then I could say key equals len. And what this means is calculate len on each element in the list, and based on the value you get back of len, sort the elements of the original list. All right, so we're not sorting, we're not sorting by the original values in the list. We're not sorting by the things in my list because we can't. We're also not going to get output that is the length of each element because we can't. So instead, we're going to run sort on my list, key equals len. And of course, this is going to fail also. And it's going to fail because integers have no len. So what we could do is we could say, well, sorted my list, key equals stir, right? And we'll just treat them all as strings. That's going to be basically alphabetized by strings. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe not. But what if I want to do something else? What if I want to sort the elements of my list, right? And if it, it has a len, then return that. But if it doesn't, well, actually, let's do it a different way. Let's say if it is an integer, then return the int, right? If it can be turned into an integer, then well, let's just do this. You know, if not, let's make it nice and simple. If not, then return its length, right? I don't want to make this too ridiculously complicated. So if it's an integer, then return the int. If not, then return its length. This means, by the way, that our strings 1, 2, 3, and 7, 8, 9 are not going to return integer values, rather going to return the length values, and we're going to sort them by that. So how can I do this? Well, I can say here, sorted of my list, key equals, and I could define my own function. I can say here, def by, right, int or len, right, and one item. And then I can say here, do something like this, I can say if is instance uh, one item int, so if it's an integer, then we'll return uh, one item, right? Else, return, we'll say here, stir, or I should say, len of stir of one item. Let's just turn to a string just in case. And then I can say key equals by int or len. And now we're indeed going to get all these things. So if it's an integer, that's going to be sorted by integer. If not, we're going to sort it by len. All right, so we're going to get, this is basically three, then three, then four, then five. So it actually worked just fine. But wouldn't it be nice if we could compress this all into one thing? And that's where lambda comes in. Lambda is a keyword in Python that returns an anonymous function object. It allows us to create a function without defining actual function. So what I can do is I can say sorted of my list. Key equals lambda of what? Well, one item. Okay, because we're sort of recreating our function without with a lambda instead of by inter len. But then what am I going to do? I have an if else. And I can't use an if else in, Py, in uh, Python's lambdas because lambdas only allow you an expression. So I can't use a regular if else. And this is once again where the conditional expression comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here one item if is instance of one item and int else len stir one item. Oh, capitalized there by mistake. And I run this. Oh, it did not like that at all. What did I get wrong here? Is, oh, because I misspelled is instance. And look at that. We get the same result. So let's just look at this once more. My lambda here, my anonymous function, takes one argument. We're going to put in the parameter one item. And what's it going to do? Well, it's going to return one item if one item is an instance of integer. Otherwise, it's going to turn one item into a string and take its length and return that exactly the same functionality as we saw here by interlen. So the subscriber to my mailing list said, you see, you can have conditionals in lambdas. And to which I say, yes, you can, but do you really want to use this syntax? 
And my answer most of the time is no. My answer is that I find this, yes, it's technically correct, you can do it, but I would much prefer to have this in an external function. Um, so, points to you on the fact that you're right, points to me, I think, on the fact that it's just completely unreadable. I hope this is useful and interesting. If you have other questions you'd like to see me answer here, please don't hesitate to send them in to me uh, via email. You can catch me on Twitter as well. And I'll be back soon with more hints and tricks and tips about Python.